Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another episode of Comic Book Origins where we talk about any comic book superhero, villain, or team. Their first appearance is what I'm talking about here. And this time around, we're talking about Spider-Man, of all things. Created in 1962 by none other than Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. A little bit of a controversy on who created them. And uh, are they co-creators or did Stan Lee come up with it and everything? So... You can let me know in the comments below where you stand on that one. And uh, I'm going to stay out of it for a while. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's like, what, what can be said that is not already known about this particular character? Uh, he made them because teenagers started reading a lot of comic books and he wanted to create a teenage character that wasn't the sidekick because that's usually what teenagers were. And boom, we got Spider-Man. And he had been one of the most popular superheroes ever since he first emerged. Now, this is a commissioned video and I want to thank uh, the real Dr. Venkman, except no substitutes for commissioning this video. Now, for now, I have put a kibosh on the commission videos just so I could catch up because I'm very behind and I apologize to everybody. I will be getting to them. And uh, with all that aside, let's jump into the first appearance of Spider-Man, Amazing Fantasy 15. As always, first thing we do is take a look at the cover, see what we could see. Well, right away, we've got a whole bunch of people standing outside on a building with seemingly no way off of it. I don't know, is that a doorway here? The, you got a guy who... Everything's on a lean, too. <laughs> it looks like they're about to fall off the buildings. Everything's about to crash. One guy is standing on a level below. I guess that's a doorway right behind them. But they're all looking down to see what's going on as you have Spider-Man with his web attached to a building that's right now. Are, are they swinging around a corner? I mean, it, at least you got that going with the motion line, so maybe that's what's happening, because if it's at that angle, holy Toledo bird, will you hush? If it's swinging at that angle, it just doesn't seem uh, like it's attached to anything higher than he is. All righty, and uh, it looks like also he's carrying Jack Kirby. Just going to put that out there. Though the world may mock Peter Parker, the timid teenager, it will soon marvel at the awesome might of Spider-Man. Introducing Spider-Man. Also in this issue, an important message to you from the editor about this new magazine. I guess it's that it's going to be canceled soon. Spider-Man! Like costume heroes, confidentially, we in the comic mag business refer to them as long underwear characters. And as you know, they're a dime a dozen, but we think you may find our Spider-Man just a bit different. Say, gang, we need more guys for the dance. How about Peter Parker over there? Are you kidding? That bookworm wouldn't know a cha-cha from a waltz. Peter Parker, he's Midtown High's only professional wallflower. And sadly, Peter Parker stands by watching, knowing he'll always be an outsider. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a huge fan of Stan Lee's turn of prose. Uh, at points, it could get a little bit much, but dude, come on. It's Stan freaking Lee. And thus, we begin to see the life that could turn a mild-mannered teenager into a wallflower such as Peter Parker. And I mean, he's raised by old people. It's, and it's an uncle. It could be like 40, which I'm, you know, they kind of did in the, I mean, yeah, they were a little bit older in the ultimate version, but come on, they're ancient. Aunt May looks like she's 90, and this is uh, the very first appearance. The faculty at Midtown High were, uh, were blah, 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 blah. the faculty at Midtown High were also fond of the clean-cut, hard-working honor student. Keep up the good work, P Parker. And you're sure to rate a scholarship when you graduate. I'll do my best, sir. But alas, other teenagers can sometimes unwittingly be so very cruel to a shy young man. Sally, uh, I was wondering if you're busy tonight. Peter, for the umpteenth time, you're just not my type. <laughs> not when a dreamboat like Flash Thompson is around. I admire your good taste, doll. Get lost, bookworm. Now, that that girl is not being cruel. I, I literally once had a, a, a girl. I remember her name, everything. I don't remember what she looks like, though. That's weird. But she looked at me after, like, I was in the friend zone completely. And she kept asking questions. I gave her advice. And she goes, oh, you're so good at this. And this is what she said to me. 
I wish I could find a man like you. That's cruel, okay? That's cruel. This this is nothing right here. She's she's a okay. But desperate for friends, Peter Parker asks them if hey, there's a, a great experiment at the science hall tonight. Would any of you like to go with me? Science hall, ha! <laughs> you stick to the science, son. We'll take the chicks. Yes, for some, being a teenager is many heartbreaking moments. See you around, bookworm. Give our regards to the Adam Smashers, Peter. Someday I'll show them. Someday they'll be sorry that they laughed at me as we see Peter Parker going into the science lab. Then again, you gotta ask yourself, how much of this is really Peter's fault? I mean, think about it. He's gotta read the room. Maybe Flash Thompson is not the guy to invite to the science lab. There's geeks out there. There's other people who like science out there. And yet, he's going after Flash. This doesn't even make sense. Come on, guy. Peter, you're supposed to be a genius. Read the room. Read the room. And thus we get to, yes, I said thus, and thus we get to the most famous part of this particular story where we see the spider descending from the ceiling, getting caught into the radioactive ray because seriously, they're just saying, hey, look at my ray gun and we're not going to be behind any kind of protective shielding or wear protective clothing, but hey, come watch this thing that's filled with enough radioactivity to cause a spider bite to give this kid superpowers. And Peter Parker does feel a little bit woozy, so he gets made fun of that by the eggheads. But when he's outside, he's, oh my gosh, I'm all tingly. And then a car comes and he leaps out of the wave to safety and finds himself sticking to a wall. So he does what anybody would do, I guess, in that particular situation. He climbs it. What's come over me? I, I'm scaling this wall just as easily as I could walk. Mommy, look at that man walking up the side of the building. That's the last horror movie I take you to, young man. It's incredible. I've reached the roof in just a few seconds, and what's this? I crushed a steel pipe as though it were paper. It's the spider. It has to be. Somehow, in some miraculous way, his bite has transformed me. His, it, it's, okay, let me try that again. His bite transferred his own power to me. I can walk down this cable as effortlessly as the spider can along his own web. So Peter wonders what to do with his newfound power and how to experiment with it. And he figures, hey, wrestling match. And he sees a sign, $100 to the man who can stay in the ring three minutes with Crusher Creel. Or Crusher Creel. God dang it. Crusher Hogan. My goodness gracious. I'm like looking at the word, but muscle memory is taken over. Anyway, he goes home to put on a disguise so he doesn't become a laughingstock. And Peter Parker does show up at the wrestling match saying, Hey, I'll try for that $300, Crusher. Well, well, if it ain't a little mass marvel, step up, sucker. Now just relax, Shorty. I'll try to make this painless as possible. And Crusher runs at him. Peter Parker's bouncing all over the place to the point where he picks up Crusher, climbs up to the top of a pole with him, and Crusher gives up. And people are like, hey, this is the greatest act I've ever seen. Sensational, fantastic. And that mask gimmick gives him just the right touch of mystery. He was terrific. And apparently some cigar-chomping TV exec is watching. He goes, that mask character may be just what I've been looking for. So, after he hears the guy say something about showmanship, Peter Parker goes home, starts sewing up the Spider-Man costume, makes himself some web shooters, which he literally says, with some strong liquid cement at the end, I can pull myself up anywhere. So, I'm pretty sure they changed the, uh, they, they changed the, the formula, but there you go, guys. This is officially the first appearance of Spider-Man. And apparently, he kind of lets things go to his head because he's got one day of TV where he's bouncing around and showing off his we webbing and everything. Okay, Spider-Man, cut. That's enough. Don't show him too much. Leave him begging for more. And even after his first appearance, Spider-Man kind of has a big head about celebrity and everything. And as he's walking out, there's a guy running towards him. Stop, thief, stop him. If he makes it to the elevator, he'll get away. The thief says, made it. I'm safe now. That cop can never get down to the lobby as fast as I can in this high-speed express elevator. Lucky that guy in the costume didn't stop me. And the cop yells at Spider-Man, What's with you, mister? All you had to do was trip him or hold him just for a minute. Sorry, pal, that's your job. I'm through being pushed around by anyone. From now on, I just look out for number one, and that means me. 
And later we see him hanging out with Aunt May and Uncle Ben. They're the only ones who've ever been kind to me. Uh, I'll see to it that they're always happy, but the rest of the world can go hang for all I care. In the days that follow, the Spider-Man becomes the sensation of the nation. He enjoys his TV career in one evening. As Peter Parker returns home from a personal appearance, a police car in front of our house, what could be wrong? Bad news, son. Your Uncle Ben has been shot. Murdered. Uncle Ben dead? No, it can't be. Who did it? Who shot him? It was a burglar. Your uncle surprised him. But don't worry, lad. We've got him trapped. He's in the old Acme warehouse at the waterfront. We'll get him. Your aunt is next door. The neighbors are looking after her. Wait! The cop yells after Peter, but Peter's going upstairs to his room. He's changing into a Spider-Man costume. I know the old Acme warehouse. It's been deserted for years. A killer could hold off an army in that gloomy old place. But he won't hold off Spider-Man. So we cut to Peter Parker standing outside of his apartment building in his Spider-Man outfit. He swings across town saying that the cops can't get there in time, but he can, but they're already there. So, yeah, but they're not doing anything because they're like, hey, if we go in there, he might shoot us. And that's what the thief is thinking. When the moon goes down, I can... isn't when the moon goes down, the sun comes up, so it's daytime? Alrighty, now's the time to go, dude. Keep running. Go quick. But Spider-Man surprises him, saying he'll never escape again. The thief tries to run away. Gotta get away! I, I gotta hide! I must be seeing things! Spider-Man corners the thief. There's no place on Earth where you can hide from me. First, my web will relieve you of the gun! And he shoots a webbing onto his hand. And then my fist will do the rest. Punching the thief, knocking him unconscious, Spider-Man finally gets a good look at him. That, that face, it's... Oh no, it can't be! It's the fugitive who ran past me, the one I didn't stop when I had the chance. We see outside with the cops. I hate to do it, but we'll have to rush him now. Can't take a chance of him slipping by in the dark. Captain, look! It's him! On a spider's web! And a short distance away. It's, it's my fault. It's all my fault if only I had stopped him when I could have. But I didn't, and now Uncle Ben is dead! And a lean, silent figure slowly fades into the gathering darkness, aware at last in this world with great power. There must also come great responsibility. And so a legend is born, and a new name is added to the roster of those who would make the world of fantasy the most exciting realm of all. And be sure to see the next issue of Amazing Fantasy. Wait, what? <laughs> For further amazing exploits of America's most different new teenage idol, Spider-Man. Wow, so obviously they didn't know this book was going to get canceled. However, uh, of course, in Amazing, you know, amazing Spider-Man number one is where we saw the next amazing adventure there. So, wow, okay. There you go. What do you think? I got to tell you, actually, it's pretty darn good. There's not a lot of Silver Age silver silliness to it. Uh, now, of course, like I said, Stan Lee could turn a prose, and I, I think that's uh, pretty cool. It's Even the flowery stuff isn't there too much. This is one of Stan Lee's more down-to-earth stories. This was done very well, actually. I, you know, just going over it again, and it has been a long time since I've read The Origin of Spider-Man. We all know it. Why go back to it, right? And or we'll see somebody else's six volume Brian Michael Bendis six volume uh, story of the same thing, um, but it's done so well in fifteen pages. It's it's I've I've got I got to applaud him. Way to go! But you know I'm saying Stan Lee all the time, but I cannot tell you how important it was that Steve, Steve Ditko drew this book. And yeah, they knew that. You, I'm going to bring his name up again. Stan Lee knew that. It, uh, Jack Kirby was the first artist brought on, but he was very used to drawing superheroes. So he drew Peter Parker very bulky, very superhero-like. And they needed somebody who could make Peter Parker look awkward. And the art is a little bit off when you compare it to other Marvel comics of the day, but I think that is one of its great strengths, too. This is a great combination of writer and artist. Steve Ditko, even though, yes, on uh, personally, I am on Stan Lee's side on this. He wrote it down on paper. He created the character, and uh, Steve Ditko drew it. I think Stan Lee is the, uh, is the creator of Spider-Man. I think, though, that without Steve Ditko's vi visual language, 
this would not have been as popular as it is back in the day. And I think we've had some great artists since. Uh, some say Todd McFarlane's the best uh, artist that's ever drawn Spider-Man. You make that, that decision for yourself. But um, it, it, I don't think it can be understated how important Sp uh, uh, Steve Ditko was to the popularity of Spider-Man, even though, yes, I am on the side of... Uh, of Stanley creating them. Anyway, that's my opinion. What is yours? What did you think of the story? What did you think of the uh, debate? Who created Spider-Man? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe. Uh, ring that notification bell if you haven't done it already, making sure that your notifications are set on all. And uh, here on, on the phone, in the uh, Google, and on YouTube. And if you haven't done it already, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. Drop a dollar in the tip jar. Help us keep the lights on in this place and help us keep making videos for you. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.